Hey y'all, this is Sarah. I told you I'd be back with some more ideas for backgrounds for doing different projects using your foam core boards. I wanted to share a black and white one with you. Um, I still will be using some of the faux wood look simply to do my framing, but the majority of this backdrop is going to be using the plain black and white. Um, if you're wondering what this is, I am using Ready Board brand foam board or foam project boards, foam core. It's got a lot of different ways it's referred to, um, but this is something you find in your office supply section and school supply section. It looks a lot like poster board, but if you notice, it has this thicker foam center. This one that we're using, the Ready Board brand, has this papery surface rather than the laminated types. Um, to do the faux painting and things like that, the papery surface is better. I'm using black and white, and um, we're only using a little bit of the black. You only need about three strips, three three-inch strips of the black, um, and I'm going to be using some of the white. This video is sponsored by Ready Board, and I'm ready to dive in because I really like this idea as a background, especially for those of you that are into um, the farmhouse look. I intend on using this background for a a Halloween slash fall project, but I'm not going to do that here. I wanted to focus more on um, giving you some creative ideas to use your foam core and create some interesting visual backgrounds. So that being said, I'm going to tell you where I'm starting and, and kind of what we're doing. First things first, my piece is going to be um, about... 30 by 18 and three quarters. And I know that sounds like a weird measurement, but that's just kind of how it worked out for the pattern that I wanted to use. I'm using um, just the white for my back, uh, my backer piece. You could use black or white on this. It really, um, it really is not going to matter whatever you have handy. So to start with, I have cut, um, you guys know that I typically cut in the three inch width. There is nothing locking you into this three inch width. I get asked that a lot. No, the reason I do it is because that's what size my ruler is and it makes it convenient. Um, but I have cut down these squares. I've got 18 of the black and 18 of the white. Now, we're going to be using some of these fully as their squares and some of them will be cutting in half. And these are simply just three by three squares cut down off of my strips. You get about um, 10 squares per strip. So I want to go ahead and get started. I have got um, these blank white ones sitting beside me here that you can see. And to make this task really simple, I'm going to go ahead and bring one of these um, white three inch by 30 inch strips over here and glue it to the side. Um, but I want to tell you, there's a couple ways you can do this. Uh, as far as this part is going to end up looking like photo matting. Um, so you can either bump them together if you want to, um, in this manner, or you can come in and do it with um, your mitered cut. So I'm going to show you that really quick. And if you decide to miter it, save those triangles and you'll actually need a little bit less of your white squares. So in order to miter this, I want to show you um, the best trick that I can really show you to miter. When you're getting ready to miter anything, um, and this question has come up, a lot of people question um, whether or not you're going longer than your piece. You are not. So whatever you're going to miter, you want it to be the full um, length of your piece. And we're going to want the full width. So um, I do believe that my width on here is this 18 and 3 quarters. And I forgot this ruler is not long enough. Let's get my big boy out here and I'm going to shoot for 18 and three quarters. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So when I cut this down, it's going to be um, the exact same width 
and length. I'm doing nothing more than using a straight razor blade, but there is a few tricks to this. Um, I typically show a cutting mat, a self-healing cutting mat when I'm working. I'm kind of used to cutting at this point with a straight blade. If you're still struggling, put some cardboard underneath you. It's much easier. These self-healing mats make this blade want to drag. So the number one thing I can tell you for this project for sure um, to get really crisp cuts is always start your blade above where you're wanting to hit. Especially when we go to cut these squares. And you can see that just went straight through really nicely. I'm going to cheat and use this to measure my other piece there at the top. Simple enough. The other ones, I don't even have to cut those down. They are the full length of this foam core sheet. So that saves me a little extra cutting. Okay, so we've got essentially our mat, um, our photo mat. The next step um, when you're trying to miter, whoop, I can't pick up my ruler here. Um, you want to create a perfect square to use at the end. So that's what I'm doing. And I want to make sure if I've got like a side that doesn't look as good. Um, I don't want that face up. If there's fingerprints or smudges or anything, you want this to stay bright white. So just kind of watch for that. So I've marked out um, just a square since this is three by three. Now we're going to come right at that corner to corner on the diagonal and you really want to get it straight up corner to corner this is where it's really important to start your blade up high you want these corners to be super sharp so i'm going to start way up way up high above my cut if i start right here i risk crunching this down ripping this paper um, what have you so i start way up here this piece we can save it will be able to be used same thing for the other end and we want the long pointy part of our miter to be on the same side and by that I mean here's my long pointy part here's my short end we want this edge to have that same long pointy part so we're going to want to cut our diagonal up this direction and you're going to do this for all four pieces if you want to miter this, um, this matting. But you could do like the flush bump of it and just bump the ends together. And that would be fine as well. I think for the matting, either which way with the design we're working with, it's going to work out. Now, if you notice, looks like maybe there's a little mark here of some kind. Dollar Tree has these gum erasers. Um, I think they call them adhesive erasers, maybe. But they work really well on this because they do not leave the residue behind that colored pencil erasers um, can smudge and leave behind. If you notice, it picks up some of um, the pencil lead or whatever color the eraser may be. And when you go to use it on this really absorbent white foam core, it'll want to pick it up. So if you have one of these and you are dealing with foam core, it's a really, really handy thing to have by your side if you happen to get um, a fingerprint smudge or something like that. Sometimes it'll pull up adhesive. Um, if you make a mess with your glue, if you even make a mess with a little bit of your painting, sometimes... Uh, if it's just a small little bit, you can turn around and use that and it works really well without tearing into this super thin paper. So I'm going to go ahead and miter all four of these. We're going to get them um, somewhat applied to this base and then we're going to fill in and then frame out. I have all my miters complete and now this is where um, we're going to put part of this down just to kind of give us... Um, a building point and then we'll add the other parts after so I'm gonna take one of the long pieces along my edge 
and do that so that I have a guide for this long side. And I'm going to do the same with the short side. I'm using regular hot glue. Um, it is my preference for working with foam core. It's a quick dry glue, so there's less chance of uh, moisture soaking through this paper surface and causing any buckling or bowing. I'm gluing this pretty secure um, because I don't want it shifting or anything like that. Especially along these edges. I'm real funny about getting the edges because that's where you typically pick them up from and move them around and go to hang them from. That's where you want most of your sturdiness. So I'm going to come down here and attach this one. And I want to make sure that my pencil marks are not... I want to go ahead and use this one because... Um, it's got a dent on that side, and I don't want that dent to show up, so it will work better here. I'm going to pop it right in place. Sometimes you can use the banged up foam core and it not be a problem. If you got a banged up piece um, right now, use it for your backer. But for this edging, we actually want it to look pretty, um, pretty pristine. So... As you can see, all of my triangles that came off of these pieces, I went ahead and saved. So I won't even need um, all 18 of the white squares. I'm only going to probably need about 12 of those. Um, and you'll need some in the black. So all you're going to have to do is come in with your black and basically do the same thing we did when we mitered. You're going to catch it from corner to corner and just slice through it. This is where you really want to be sure that you start your blade up higher. When you catch these sharp points, you want to keep those really nice and sharp. Um, maybe you can see just how sharp that edge is. Um, and you want to keep it that way. And this is all this is. And you can see it's straight in half. And you could do this with any size. You could go down bigger. You could go down smaller. Um, whichever way you want to go. So I'm going to go ahead and start laying some down here. And I'm just going to slide this over here so I can use it to butt against it. But I'm not gluing it in place. I'm just going to use it to help kind of pop things over a little bit. So, I've got these kind of where I want them, these half triangles, or these half square triangles here. I'm going to go ahead and glue these in place. This one is actually another one that's really satisfying um, to pop these in place. When you start building your pattern, um, there is a lot of satisfaction to building the pattern. Be aware that sometimes um, the black foam core can, I guess it depends on if it's maybe at the beginning of the manufacturing process or maybe closer to the end of the process. I'm not really sure um, how it occurs. However, you can find sheets that are different colors from one another. So be aware of that. Look at your pieces before you do all the work cutting them because you can likely find some that are in different shades. And I'm just gonna grab my chair and get comfortable and, um, and have some fun sticking this pattern down. And I want to show you that I have this sitting beside me. I have considered putting this on this piece. Um, and it matches really well with what we're going with. If you saw last year, I did a lot of black and white diamond patterns. This year, I wanted to kind of expand on that. So... 
now you can see why I just wanted to have this to kind of use it to bump it, but I wasn't quite ready to glue it. This is where your half triangles come into play. You could do this in whatever order you wanted to. I wanted, um, by starting with the black down here, um, above my little three inch band here, with starting with the black, I ended up with more of the black squares showing their full size than um, the white ones. And that was kind of what I wanted. If you started with the white, when it gets to the next row, you'll see what I mean. We're just gonna glue all these down. You can kind of see what I mean about it's satisfying to watch them um, pop right in their place. Okay, that one I did glue down. This one is not glued down. So as you can see at this point, what I did was um, one row down along this bottom frame, starting with the black halves. I have followed up with full size white, then it'll take two of the triangle pieces to hit there. We're going to come in now with a full row of black and now you see what i mean about i wanted the the black to kind of have a dominant pattern or show up with all this white background so um, that was why i started with the black down here but you could start with the white down here and then your rows like this would be white and then your kind of partial rows would be black so we're gonna these are all looking good i can put some glue on them Assuming that you got your three inch cuts um, fairly accurate, these all should pop in pretty well. I liked the idea of doing this versus trying to paint something um, to this effect on here, and here is why. Painting on here can be very hit or miss, and especially in a, um, a pattern like this where you would have to tape it off with some kind of masking tape. Uh, I have had success with certain styles of washi tape that are more gentle with their stickiness, but some of the masking tapes can um, literally rip this real thin paper surface right off, so you have to, you have to kind of test it. This was just much easier to just go ahead and whip out these cuts and have this, this dimensional pattern working. And you can see I'm still working off these little triangles that we cut off of our, our edge here. I don't know why I'm not starting on the side that's glued down. Probably because I'm right hand dominant. So I keep wanting to start to the right there. And you can see how nicely, let's just cheat a little bit here. So, I'm just looking at my corners. Some of my corners did not, um, they're the ones off the very end of my strips they get bent up sometimes the foam core does so i'm trying to make sure that those are face down if it's one of those end pieces um you guys know what i'm talking about the foam board can get really beat up sometimes transporting it even just from the store in your car home you can beat those edges pretty easy you got to be pretty gentle You could use this piece just like this, um, honestly, even with just the white surround. This almost reminds me of, um, I don't know, it kind of looks like a cabinet door a little bit. Like out of a, um, maybe a McKinsey child inspired kitchen. I know there's a lot of that black and white look. Um, in those designs. I've got all kinds of glue stringies that I'm fighting. That's what's taking me so long. 
Anybody else find their most crafting enjoyment is late night on the weekend? I feel like that's when my house is the calmest. We're getting ready for back to school, so I should get a little more quiet time. Spending a, spending a summer with a house full of teenagers um, does not lead to a ton of quiet time. So I'm going to just keep building this pattern up. You can kind of see how I'm rotating it out. Um, it's real easy to get yourself confused, but you're just essentially keeping a row of black and white where alternatively, if you were doing the checkerboard pattern, your row would be black, white, black, white. Instead, we're doing a row with them tilted on the diagonal um, and that whole row of them will stay that color. Maybe that makes sense. Oh, I'm not happy with that piece. Um, I didn't check the corners before I applied it. I love my Sure Bonder glue gun. I really, really do. It is probably one of the most impressive glue guns I've ever used. But I'm killing myself using these Dollar Tree glue sticks. They are so stringy. Uh, if you keep seeing me moving my arms around all weird, I'm fighting the glue strings. I like the price point of the Dollar Tree hot glue, and I go through so much hot glue um, that it's just not cost effective for me to use anything else at this moment. You guys have seen how much glue I tend to use for most of my projects. So I'm going to just keep going upwards and then I'll show you how um, we'll do when we get to that other end piece and it's going to be pretty similar to this it almost kind of tells you as it goes once you start getting that pattern started it makes it very easy to keep up with it okay really quickly you can see I've gotten all the way to this end I've ended here with this row these obviously stick out so I'm gonna pop those in place right there they're not even glued down they're just popped in place I'm going to mark it to where this ends just like that and I'm just gonna come in and trim that down um, to fit those little corners. You can always map this out to where it fits um, entirely that you don't have to trim any of this down. But I wanted to keep pretty much the full length of this piece um, in this 30 inches that this foam core comes. I wanted kind of this long, narrow piece. So I decided to go this route with these measurements and I wanted the border on this. You could absolutely do it without a border and I'll show you really quick kind of what that um, looks like. And I do plan to do that um, along with some other fall pieces. So you can see those fit in really nicely. I'm going to go ahead and get this piece down the side glued in. And then we will pop this very last one on. Okie dokie, I have all of my little matte pieces glued down. Everything's all glued in place. This is a pretty stable little piece here. This is what I was going to show you. Maybe you can kind of tell just by looking. You can absolutely do it um, without the matting around it and it's fine it looks good i plan on doing something with this for halloween um i don't have i don't have all my halloween stuff near me but i do plan on doing um this particular pattern this year um but i liked it with the matting now you could take this very very simply go ahead get some of your faux wood painted pieces this is one inch strips that i'm using 
all the paint tutorials for these are always their own video. You can come in, glue them down just like you normally would and frame this out like any other piece. However, I'm going to sit here and tinker and I'm going to um, share with you how I plan on tinkering. I am going to make this more like a box frame or like a shadow box, if you will. That is my hope. That is my goal. So, I'm going to be tinkering with that. Um, I've done it on a small scale and it was much easier when I've been doing my miniatures and things. However, I have not done it on... Um, I haven't done it on a giant piece the way that I plan on doing it. I have done it where I've stacked them and kind of done this, but I'm trying to find a cheat way around it where I'm not using nearly as many pieces. So, um, you guys are going to experience that with me. And I'm pretty sure it's going to take eight strips. Typically, these run about a quarter inch thick on their thickness. So when you go to cut this bottom that should be the 1875, you're going to want to cut your base strip right here that's going to go to this bottom um, at 19 and a quarter. More than likely, I'm going to just mark mine out and that is simply because you cannot always, always guarantee that these things are a full quarter inch thick. So to start this little experiment off with you guys, this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm going to start with one of my longer sides because I know that this strip is not going to get any longer than this full length of this piece. So I'm going to start here on one of my longer sides. We're already at a two sheet thickness, so we've got a pretty good surface here to use. Now be careful, sometimes your hot glue can really melt this foam and have it shrivel up in there. So um, I'm going to suggest doing it this way. I'm gonna put this piece up close to it. I'm gonna get my glue down this direction more towards the base of this. I don't need it up towards this top. Now, as I've gone across this entire thing, this glue has now cooled just enough to not be quite melty hot, um, but still have it stick. So I'm gonna slide it down onto here, kind of slip it in place. Now, if you feel like you're not getting it straight, try something square to um, give it some support. I'm just using, I had these handy. It's some of my Dollar Tree sanding blocks. They should be pretty close to square, so that's easy enough for me to grip to kind of help um, shore these up along this edge. I want to go ahead and do it on the two longest sides because I know that there is not a lot of adjustment that I'm going to be able to do um, lengthwise to um, lengthen these. So these are going to be my for sure. I don't even need the edge completely painted on this because I'm going to stack on top of it. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to try to glue at my lowest point on this strip. By the time I get to the end, it's not scorching hot coming out. It's still melty hot and I'm less likely to melt um, the sides of my foam core. And the only reason that I'm really concerned about it is this surface part, this mat board part that is visible. I really don't want to see um, that kind of shrivel underneath it. Because if it shrivels under that paper surface, you usually can notice it. So I'm going to flip this over, do my best anyway, and just see if everything is attached from this side. If you notice here, I didn't get... A great attachment so I'm gonna squeeze in here from this back side rather than my front and try to squeeze a little glue right down in that crack hold it in place 
it's late on the weekend, so I'm feeling experimental. And like I said, I've done this on a smaller scale, especially playing with miniatures and making my own little um, miniatures and things on my own. However, uh, to go quite this big, I think maybe the biggest I've done it is probably 14 by 14 at the most. So it's a little bit different playing around with it at the moment because my 30 inch side can't be any longer. Where when I go up to a 14 inch or something like that, I can always get a little bigger. So my next step is going to be to come and get these ends done as well. And we've got um, kind of the basic of our box frame. Now, had you painted the inside um, of this, your faux wood, along with the outside, you could leave it just like this. And I have done that on something. I don't know if there's a video. Um, but I have done something like that. And it gives you um, kind of an interesting frame as well. Especially, um, you can see from the side. So you can always just do that. But I wanted to give you some other ideas while I was playing with um, just kind of some basics. Okay, so now for sure these are stuck down. I'm pulling this end down. I'm going to take a pencil and mark where I need to cut since I can't 100% guarantee that these things are each a quarter of an inch. But typically they are. So now I've got kind of my cutting mark. I feel like maybe that's a little weird. I think that line is crooked, but that that's accurate. I'm going to go ahead and cut this down. Right there on my little mark. I'm running out of room. I don't know if you can tell, but I am running out of room here. It's a pretty good sized piece um, compared to what I had originally um, planned on doing. To show you but I wanted to get enough of that pattern showing okay so I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing right here the only difference is is I'll be able to come up and secure this to this upright piece I'm trying to keep pretty decent control of it so it doesn't squeeze out the sides too much. Make sure all of that is secured. You can kind of see now there's some dimension. Had you painted both sides of this, you could do it just like this. And I think um, that turns out to be a really cute frame all on its own. But I'm going to continue to build this up, and it's going to be closer to a shadow box. So I've flipped sides again, and I'm going to do this the very same way. I want to line it up down here. And I'm sliding my finger kind of right in this corner to really get me flush to that corner. Hold it in place. Mark it again. I love these little cutting pads from Dollar Tree when you don't want to have your big giant one out. The little self-healing mat. This one's really convenient for smaller, um, smaller things like this, like doing my framing and my skinny pieces. Okay. Same thing. Pop the glue towards the lowest part of this strip. Come up. So, so far we're in four one inch strips is what we've used to get to this point um, of framing. Any guesses what we're doing next? I'm sure you have an idea now. Um, I'm going to come in with these. And let's see if I've got one that's painted on both sides. So this one you want to go ahead and have those edges painted. 
I could always hit these later. Um, but this particular strip, it's easier to go ahead and make sure that it's painted on both sides at this point. So here's where I'm at. And I have debated on whether or not I'm going to miter this. We're going to try it. Let's see how it works. It can't help to, it can't hurt to give it a try. If this one fails, I'm in a little bit of foam core, so not a big deal. All right, in order to miter this, we're going to do the same miter on this one inch like we did our other pieces. So I'm going to measure over one inch because this strip is one inch wide. So I'm going over one inch to get my square. I'm gonna go from corner to corner on this one inch. Start my blade up high to get these sharp cuts. I'm gonna flip it down. I wanna make sure that I get them going the same way. And I'm just flipping it over so maybe you guys can see when I mark it. Okay, so I'm checking to see where my point goes. If it's on that side, I want to go up with my cut. Start above it. And that way it doesn't kind of bludgeon this, this tip here. So for these, I'm going to suggest measuring out by laying it on here the same way, just because if you have tilted this in maybe just a little bit or something like that, you're getting it accurate to this strip. Um, or if maybe you glued it and it shifts out just a hair, that way, um, if you just did the standard, like I'm guessing the nine and a, the 19 and a quarter, um, that could be hit or miss, depending on if you got this straight up and down versus you might have got like a little tilt to it or something. So that's what I've done. I just went on the underside to mark it. I'm going to trim this down. And then add the same mitered 45 degree cuts on it and then we'll adhere them in place and continue to um, test this out from there. I'm kind of excited to see how it's gonna look and how it's gonna hold up on a piece this large. Um, and I also may have to look at a way of securing it versus on the smaller ones. I've been lucky enough for it to hold up, so we'll see. As you can see, all my pieces are cut down to my mitered corners. Now I have got some raw cut ends that I just want to hit with a little bit of color off my sponge here. I just don't want the white to show up at my corners. So I decided since I have never tested this in such a large scale, I've only done it in the smaller sizes. I brought in four of these little lightweight wood squares that Dollar Tree sells. I am going to pop those right in my corners. Just for a little extra security, I may or may not would honestly need it, but it makes me feel better. And these actually are the perfect, perfect um, height for this actual piece and how it's laid out. If you lay yours out a little differently, it might not quite work out that way so I don't want to mix up what pieces belong where just gonna sit there and once these are in place I think it should be a pretty good support system for um, adding this top layer Ooh, let's get you all stuck down in there I really probably could have glued the sides to it as well, but I didn't. Okay, 
So I'm going to start with the smallest piece. I feel like it might be easier to work with on a smaller scale. I'm going to go ahead and do it very similar to... Um, very similar to how I did the other one. I want to get just the edge for this. And I'm having to hold it and try to do it. By the time I get to the end, that should have cooled some. I'm going to pop a little right there on that wood square. And I am flushing this right up against that standing piece. I want to make sure... It is connected all the way across, I'm cleaning up any glue that's seeping out. So essentially, I have just boxed this in. If you can see that, I'll go ahead and spin around to one of these longer ones. Let's see how this goes on the longer. I go end to end. Maybe. My hands tend to get a little shaky sometimes when I'm doing these little skinny ones. So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide this in its place. Hopefully I've got my measurements all correct or close enough anyway maybe we'll see i'm gonna hope for the best now i really could take my glue gun i'd have to get in an awkward position but try to come in here and squeeze on this inside as well i don't know that i'm going to do that um, i can't turn it in a position at the moment gosh my measurements are a hair hair off so I'm going to go ahead and put this bigger one on let's see if I just hold this down if I can do it and I'm getting right up to that edge the best I can a little bit on my square a little bit on this square. Flush this up. Make sure I don't have any spots that aren't touching that, that skinny little section there. Can you guys see that now? This kind of shadow box looking frame. So, as you can see, I am a hair off right here. Can you see that? However, I do have an idea on fixing that. In case anybody else does that. So, I, instead of trying to edit this out, this error out, I want to show you how to salvage this if I can. Okay, so here is my solution. And this really is a good teaching moment. Um, if anybody has gotten to this point where you're almost done and you get something like this. So, what I have done is I measured what the difference was. Um, and it's one and a quarter. And likely what I did is I forgot to add in that quarter of an inch for the added bit on the end um, when you go this 30 inches. So in order to correct for that and salvage this entire piece, um, I've cut a strip that is an inch and a quarter. So do as um, I mentioned and maybe knock that quarter inch off or at least account for it. Um, which I did not. I completely neglected to think about that. But what I have done is I've got it slid now up against here. I've cut it at the full width that it needs to be, um, which was the same as the other piece. However, I'm going to come right here and mark where this angle stops. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now, the only difference is, is rather I've got that top notch marked. I've got the length 
correct. Now, rather than go over and do my 45 inches um, or my 45 degree angle, I don't know what this angle is likely. This could be a 42 or um, something like that to kind of account for that little bit of extra. So I went straight down to that corner that's the full length of this. So this is not technically a 45. It's probably something slightly different, but now it will fit to this a little better. I'm going to do the same thing and come down to this corner and hopefully this works out pretty well. Now you can see that has helped um, get it a little more fitted to that corner. I really could have honestly cut it just a little better, but here we are. I still think I'm going to be able to um, salvage this now, and I don't think that that little quarter of an inch difference there is going to be all that noticeable um, when it's all said and done. So my last step would be in, um, just to glue this one down and have this finished kind of shadow box piece. I want you to see it here from the side, um, the build out on the frame from the side. Now, if you really wanted to, if you turn this all the way, all the way tilted, you can maybe see where some of your paint edges were on the inside of your little wood strips. But for the most part, all you're seeing when you look in there is the white. Um, and you can look inside of mine. You could easily paint both sides of your faux wood strips so that when you look inside, you only see, um, you only see the wood look. Either which way it works, it's more of the depth that we're getting. And for the most part, just standing here, even with all these lights on in my space, I really am only seeing the shadows so that you can tell that it is a shadow box type frame and has some pretty substantial um, chunk to the edge now when you hold it and look at it. So those are all the things that I wanted to share in this one video. I'm going to step back and go ahead and glue this in place and maybe get some photos snapped of this thing um, really quickly. And uh, I hope it at least gives you some ideas. I had considered going in, adding um, a black border around this as well. Uh, along with this white strip, that's an option. Don't forget about that. You could always add um, maybe another piece of frame inside if you really wanted to. Um, something thinner maybe on the interior where those two join up. If somehow you didn't get yours to meet up very well, this is really forgiving since it is foam. Sometimes you can kind of budget um, up into place a little bit. It's got a hair of give but you want to be careful because a lot of times you can get it creased on you like that this particular piece i think you could pretty much add anything to it you could pretty much um hang it really either direction unlike the diamonds this is gonna drive me nuts if i don't hurry up and get that glue down my glue gun times out y'all um which is cool and it's not cool because when i stopped to take a break and um i had to stop to bake some chocolate chip cookies for my oldest one because I promised him chocolate chip cookies today. So I had to stop and do that and it times out after 30 minutes and then I forget. So now it's not heated up. It's done timed out and cooled off. Um, and I didn't realize that before I unpaused it. Um, but you could always go um, either direction on this. Unlike the diamond pattern where typically it looks better in the long way, this kind of gives you um, options of using it this is really fun as far as you can seriously pop about anything into a pattern like this and have it work you could maybe do some kind of um some kind of temporary attachment like velcro and things like that where you could make it very interchangeable um for your holidays and just velcro piece to piece here and pop things in and out that could be really fun i'm just grabbing things that are close to me to kind of show you um ways that you can use a a backdrop such as this um done out of this foam core i want to give way more options for those of you that have um really plunged into playing with the foam core and and buy it 
at the rate that I do and have it on hand and then you've got small pieces and this bits and pieces and that bits of pieces these are really good ways to use things like that up it really only took a couple of um three inch strips if you had those left over these triangles I always have a lot of the triangles from the three inch just from mitering um, the ends on things. So I wanted to kind of share some of these background ideas that are more than just uh, just the faux wood or kind of uh, give you ideas of getting the most out of your play with foam core. I'm probably going to be popping a million different things in here. Everything that I can grab um, that I happen to have ready for fall and Halloween and all of those things. There are so many things that could be really cute um, on a piece like this. I can't help myself. It's, it's um, pieces like these that you really can make versatile that I really enjoy. This is a Dollar Tree um, hanging piece. I got it for the pumpkins. So anything like that. All the little flats that you get from Dollar Tree. All of these little plaque kind of things. And these kind of seasonal decors. This is such a great way to um, get to use those. And um, really turn it into a big piece of art. Or a big piece of wall art. That's all I've got. I hope it gave you something. Um, and it didn't bore you senseless. I feel like, I'm going to be honest with you guys, after putting it together the way that I did, other than my glue gun not being hot enough to glue this bottom one, um, it's a lot more sturdy. It feels just as sturdy as the smaller ones I've done like this. I was a little concerned, um, and I'm not even entirely sure that the little blocks down here at the corners were necessary, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't create a lot of excessive weight to it however this really does i mean i'm i'm putting a little pressure here as i squeeze down on this and i really feel good about it um surprisingly enough i wasn't really sure and i figured i was going to practice run this anyway before um or i was just going to practice run it in a bigger scale and rather than wait and come up with a separate project i thought i would throw it in with this one um I do love how that turned out. I I am actually really impressed that at a piece this big, because this is a full 30 inch piece, um, that's actually way, way more uh, sturdy than I really had considered it would be at such a long length. I wasn't too worried about the short side of it. Um, it wasn't that much bigger than a couple of the pieces I had done this way. But even that, like that feels really, really... Um, really really good surprisingly I want you guys to see i love how that turns out i love that shadow box look and um this really looks like a heavy piece so that's all hope you get to do a little late night weekend crafting um as well and i will talk to you soon bye y'all